for the person who's not able to appreciate those things and they see life is a curse how do you how do you approach having a conversation with someone who no longer has hope who no longer has hope mm -hmm. Heavy. like hope for the better tomorrow when they ask the situation if they are in a place of wanting to change mm -hmm. if they wanting to make the steps forward because it's going to be tough yeah and to not to be in a place where I, I don't have the hope anymore or that's your place that's, that's responsible for what you want to do I can't knock you for that right I can't say that's wrong right you know and I think we have to sit with those folks sometimes until they're ready to move forward so sometimes juice there isn't a right word or answer is to be present with that person and just let them know that I'm here I know it's tough I know it sucks I know you lack in hope but I just want to let you know I'm here for you right or whatever we need to do let's, let's just figure it out Conference. What's the conference you're here for? Not this one. Okay. Not this one. Well, I was coming. So up you just up here to do the interview, or what you up here for? Um, I did come up to do uh, meet with one of my homeboys I haven't met for mm -hmm. with face to face, and then CBC some CBC activities. Oh, CBC again? Uh, Congressional Black Caucus. What they, do, what they doing this year? I know they usually. I ain't in getting September. to the whole thing. I, uh, I, I'm here to do networking. Uh, I'm going to a little clinician mix, you know, mixer. They sprinkling mental health into things. When they when they really gonna do some work with us? You know, like when they really getting into. To it. Do they do they really do work with us, or are we just nice to have at the events? They say it. Bah. They say it. Oh, hey, <laughs> it's always easy to put the mental health on a flyer. Oh, uh, mm. but then what about after the flyer? You know, I I judge I, your work by what you mm -hmm. what you do before the big event. Like, yeah. like what's the lead up look like? How many months of that campaign have you been running? That's that's where the work really yeah. is, man. The big events are. Oh, that's nice. Well, what happened before Rolling Loud? What happened before Broccoli City Fest? You know, well, what initiatives were you a part of? Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm up there just you know, make my stops. Got to make the stop over here. Year two get professor. Year two professor. Year two. Yeah. yeah. Year two. Year Coming two. Up. Mental yeah. Monday episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're just out here in your bag. What sneakers you got on today? What's, what you got going on? Uh, you know, little little, little threes action. I'm on. Mm -hmm. I'm on here. I'm on here. Yeah. You yeah, want to yeah. take off one of those joints and put it in the camera? Just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. You can just just hold it right in front of you. This just one. just yeah right okay. there. Yeah right there. Yeah there you go. Yeah. These are clean. Yeah. They, they look they look clean. They, ooh, that interior looks nice. That is padded, well padded. Yeah, that's the quilt in it. Yes. Wow. Now that's my uh, insole because that's I'm an old man. No, no, <laughs> we're not worried about that. Comfort <laughs> comes first. Comfort comes Put first. Put the all day insoles yeah. in there, brother. You good, yes, man? Sir. You good? You good? Nah, that thing was nice. I didn't. That was such a great flex. I didn't. I didn't see that coming today. <laughs> <laughs> you really did that. <laughs> hey man, you said you want to do in my shoes. Yeah, no, no, no. I got you. I got you. But welcome to another episode of Mental Health Monday here with my boy Trey, Professor Trey. Is it Dr. Taylor? What do we say? Wait, are you a doctor? Yeah, you working on I'm that? I'm working on a doctor. Oh, so okay, Professor right. Taylor, Professor uh -huh. G. Yeah. Uh, or Virginia just, State. Virginia State University. Yeah, yeah, with the U. Uh huh. Social work. Okay. Hale State. Okay. State. Um, uh, former therapist, now professor. Former yeah, yeah. Former therapist. Um, you know, speaker, facilitator, mm -hmm. author, author, good things like that. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, you can just call me Trey. Working out. So working out arms plus shea butter. <laughs> you know, mad moisturized. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, he already know, baby. Hey, I looked at myself on camera. I said, baby, baby, you got to go to the gym. I said, you right. You right, OG. You right. Yeah. You right. Hold on. You know what I'm saying? Um, where do we start, man? It's uh, so many places. We're shooting an episode dealing with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And we're shooting it in Suicide Awareness Month. This is coming out on Monday. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm, I was like, when you said you coming, I said, all right, I guess everyone's episodes just getting pushed out. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, Zoom when you pull up, you take good. over, all right? Yeah, we come in in my inbox, like, oh, oh, oh yo, 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 mm-hmm. episode get pushed up first. Nah, man, yeah. like, I just showed up, man. Also, YouTube is really interested in what you have to say really? on my platform. Really? Because I have to say on my platform because you have your own, and I'm like, they need to show up because all the stuff he's saying here, he's saying right there. Yeah, I am, I am, I am, I am. I keep pushing on the detailers. I had this young lady, same one I told you about, that does work with Snap and the rest of them, and she called my platform big. She was like, you know, you have a big platform. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to correct her and be like, well, this, and then I was like, wait, 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 wait. If someone's telling you you have a big platform, mm-hmm. you have a big platform. Right. You don't get to move the lens right. of how you're viewed or how you're seen. What are you going to do with that attention Yeah, for the people that think you have a big platform? And the people you have a smaller platform that's becoming big, you're not responsible for it. Don't ever think about yeah. those people. You just keep doing the work, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. we're, we're technically not here to please, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And we're not here to prove. What we're here to do is bring light to something and speak about that and then add clues, context, right. justifications, right. and validity to the conversation about something that we may have been thinking about privately. So for example, this conversation we're having, this is one of the first conversations we had in an emergency when I called you back in the day to deal with a suicidal situation where someone called me about yeah. them struggling with a suicidal ideation while I was on the road, mm-hmm. headed to I was headed to Richmond. No, no. Was I? I was, no, I was headed to uh, Jersey, Virginia right? Beach. Oh. Really? I was headed to Virginia Beach. It was for my sister's birthday. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I do remember the call. I do remember the call. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, speak on that. Um, In the realm of just your work experience. Because oh. you're a college professor now, but back in the day when you were getting your hands dirty? Yes. Yes. Oof. Yeah. Um. That's, I mean, that was my first job out of, out of graduate school. Mm-hmm. Like, when I got my degree in social work, master's of social work, uh, the first job I ever took was a uh, crisis therapist mm-hmm. and where I would do assessments on individuals who are, you know, danger to self, danger to others, not taking care of themselves. Um, and that included, you know, individuals who may have been suicidal, homicidal, or lack of capacity. And that was a, um, that was a shock going into that work and really assessing and learning and seeing you know diagno- the DSM-5 all the diagnoses up front mm-hmm. and then also seeing like the environmental factors and how they play out in the you know the mental health uh, frame of things yeah. and I will forever as much as that work was stressful and tiresome and mm-hmm. led to some burnout that work I think has shaped and led the foundation of everything I do today from a clinical aspect, but also from a teaching aspect as well, um, supervising aspect with my supervisees, just telling them about the importance of being able to assess for suicide risk, homicide risk, um, things like that, because clinicians need to have that skill set. Yeah. Was there a course that prepared you for the work that you were going to do back in the day? For crisis? Yeah. No. Not that I remember. Mm-hmm. Now, I'll, be, I'll say this. What year was this? Because the world's supposed to Don't evolve. Don't no, 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 no. I get uh, what you're saying, but the world is supposed to evolve and catch up to where things is. So, like, yeah. for example, what I'm currently calling out on social media right now, I think it's good that we're calling this out and us as a community on the mental health side is seeing actually that should be a course and us to question, well, why isn't this a course in institutions? And if it is a course, should other institutions when it comes to mental health on the clinical side start making more space for this kind of subject matter for their students yeah yeah so absolutely so so i say this as a a professor coming up on two years now in january let's go baby you know what i'm saying (laughs) let's go baby i I think i sit with that every day man just think Uh about how how blessed i am and you know just where god has taken me in these places but Mm -hmm. so all right. You want to shout out your university? 
Shout out to Virginia State University, Department of Social Work. Okay, okay. Um, if you're looking to it. get, um, become an MSW, a BSW, mm-hmm. come holler at Virginia State down yeah. in Petersburg. Yeah, you know okay, what I'm okay. On Taylor's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know what, man? Um, all right, so I went to graduate school. Well, I, undergraduate, I got my bachelor's in psychology. I don't think a lot of people know that. I have a bachelor's in psychology mm-hmm. from Virginia Commonwealth University, VCU. That was from 07 to 2011. Okay. Right? I get into the social work field for at George Mason University from 2012 to 2015. Mm-hmm. Now, I... In my graduate program was on the policy and advocacy track. Okay. So I didn't have, I didn't do the clinical track. So I think I missed a class or two and I had to make up that class when I worked on my licensure. That's such a full circle moment for you. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't remember taking a class specific to like just assessing for suicide risk. Mm -hmm. I learned that um, on the, I learned that while in the work that I did in crisis. Okay. Finish and then I'll ask. Yeah. Um, I learned, and I'm not saying, I learned a general assessment to t- way to assess how social workers assess and do things, right? The clinical aspect of assessing for suicide risk, I really learned that not, I learned that on the job, but again, I forgot, I work inpatient too psychiatric inpatient for two years before I even got my social work degree. So I already was comfortable with assessing for suicide or dealing with folks who might have been suicidal, psychotic, things like that. Um, I was already privy to that. So that, the social work degree just kind of added to that. And then I learned how to assess for suicide risk in crisis. But that is, looks different for somebody as a crisis-based worker versus an outpatient therapist versus a medical social worker or a medical you know, mental health clinician. Now, every program, typically, there's a national batch of classes that each university for that graduate program, that undergraduate program, that they have to have in their program. And they have to do. Some of them are core classes that need to be taught. And to my knowledge, um, there is not a, hey, they're assessed for suicide risk class. There are components within those classes, such as like a trauma and social work resiliency class, where we talk about with the students how to assess for somebody who was in a crisis. Now that crisis may differ. That might be a psychiatric crisis, a substance use crisis, a medical crisis, could be a housing crisis, food crisis. Those are different segments like that. So, but, and it does, we do, at least for me, I do talk about, you know, learning how to assess the suicide risk, the screening scales, things like that, the ABC models of crisis intervention, all these different things. Um, but it should be standard, yes, for most programs, at least social work programs. What is the ABC model of crisis intervention? That is <coughs> to, um, how we would go about assessing somebody if they're in a crisis. So it starts with building rapport, um, getting to know your client like that. Um, or patient, depending patient. on if it's mid-emergency. Yeah, right. Yeah, and patient. that's what you were handling at that time. What? When? When you started. Because you said you were more inpatient, handling patients directly, right? Yeah, but okay, let me back up. Let me back up. Because he's he just got to add foundation. I'm going to keep asking the questions. All right. Mm-hmm. There, they, like, so they, again, the that, that crisis model of intervention, like, that's like a standard practice of, like, you know, this is what you build rapport. Mm-hmm. You find out the precipitate, precipitating problem, what at, what aided them into getting into crisis at the moment. Yeah. And then you figure out the coping mechanism, the resources that's needed to help them get through that crisis. That's just pretty much, in a nutshell, the ABC model of crisis intervention. Those who went through those certain healthcare, not healthcare, but health professions, different disciplines, you probably are aware of that. But, Crisis and what you might have, what you do depends on the context and the role of where you're at in the community or what agency you're at. So I'm exposed to individuals who are in a psychiatric inpatient facility who are at the highest level of care. And I am, my role is not a social worker at that point. It's a mental health tech 
who was supposed to be controlling the unit, make, doing safety checks, and doing those things, right? And so that's a different function than the crisis therapist that I was when I was, you know, graduated from school, got into crisis, doing assessments, and I was assessing to see if this person met criteria to go into a psychiatric facility. Um, and so there are different functions and different roles. That's why it gets confusing sometimes for folks because because this is not common knowledge either. <laughs> it's not common knowledge, you know. Um, so the crisis model or the crisis intervention that you would do with those individuals may look different depending on the function and the role, right? Now, something I tell students too, depending on if you're a caseworker, you might not you might can do a risk assessment, but you're not doing like a, if you was a, a full risk assessment as a, the therapist would or the crisis therapist would. Does that make sense? Yeah. So context, role, setting, that matters and where you're at in those crisis settings. I'm glad you explained that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I got you. That's why. I, yeah. But it's so, confused a lot though. You know, it's, it's, and that's why I always ask lot. these questions because like, you know my gripe with the difference between a social worker versus a therapist. Yes. I bring this up all yeah. the time because yeah. it's like, you guys are right, but you guys are also wrong, right? So mm -hmm. you guys are right because you go to school for it. This is what we've been right. taught. We are a social worker first before we become a therapist, but a therapist isn't a social worker, right? right. You guys are attacking the social issues from different yeah points of view yeah right. a therapist is having the conversation holding your hand through the experience they're seeing what you're seeing and they're saying this is the part of the picture you may be missing mm -hmm. and this is what's actually bothering you and this comes mm -hmm. from this mm -hmm. and i know it's tied in because i've gotten to know who you are as a person yeah and i see when it comes up in these different parts of your life a social worker is like hey there's no food in her fridge because she's working three jobs and she has all these bills and four kids. Mm -hmm. As a state, how do we help this person? Mm -hmm. Are we checking in on their well-being? Do they have a good environment mm -hmm. for rest? I'm not talking about sleep. I'm talking about actual rest right. where they can get a break from the kids, whether it's a man or a woman. Right. The whole right? Person, yeah. You're looking at the bigger, greater picture of can they afford rent? Mm -hmm. Is there something we can give them as a state that doesn't take away from what they have going on? Right. So, for example, you can make $100,000 and after taxes you make $60,000 or you can make $20,000, which would qualify you for government assistance. But in government assistance, you're not allowed to accept promotions and everything else because you could lose those benefits to move up. But they want you to move up. But if you're telling me to move up, but this program incentivizes me to stay there, how am I really supposed to get these opportunities or change my way of life when the system is technically built for you to stay there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. when folks come on here and they say, oh, I'm a social worker, it's like, no, you're a therapist. Or they say, oh, well, I'm a therapist. It's like, no, <laughs> that function is a social worker. It's confusing, and, man. But it's for the people who don't know you guys, yeah. I know you guys well because I work with you guys and I interview you guys and I sit down and I think about everything that's said. And I'm like, oh, I could see how once people find out you're a therapist, they say, oh, come talk to my kid. They have yeah. a problem. It's like, well, that's not my specialty. No, you don't need a specialty. You're a therapist. Yeah. You guys are the people the news advertises when emergencies happen. You guys are a part of companies that are good or bad for the community, like BetterHelp, which is not a good, co it's not a good company. Trash. Right? <laughs> you guys are the new shrinks. Well, it's expensive. Mm. Right? It's, it's true. It's true. Somewhat. Right? Yeah. So... The reason this topic is important in terms of why is there a lack of courses that teaches students, grad students specifically, about prepping for suicide awareness or suicide intervention, and the reason that this topic is important, not just because of Suicide Awareness Month that we're shooting this, is 
when emergencies happen, the assumption is you needed a therapist, and yeah. that's why the emergency happened. Yeah. And I don't think that's correct. Dr. Martin. Right. She said had a yeah, yeah. great point great. that I agree Shout out with. Dr. Martin. Man. Right. She does a lot of great stuff on that. But when you look at my platform and the content, most people would assume I'm saying you guys all need therapy, and it's like I think everyone should have access to therapy, and I think yeah. therapy is a good start. But I understand that there's a bigger fight to be fought, which you've brought up in other interviews, than just therapy. Yeah. Therapy. How's the house? How's the home? Right. How's your relationship with your family? Why do you have that toxic best friend that messes up uh -huh. every single one of your accomplishments? And that's one of the reasons that you can't see past yourself. Yeah. And you only see your mistakes instead of the good that you're making within yourself and within your family and within the people around you. Are you really putting yourself in the best position? And as much as you're dealing with depression and anxiety, how much of that is an outside factor versus the internal factor? Whenever you want to become a therapist or social worker, come talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> we have this discussion every time. Come talk to me. <laughs> Pull up to my office. Just come talk. Hey, I said if you can get me a full scholarship. Mm -hmm. At your school, mm -hmm. I'll become a therapist. Okay. That's it. Give me a full scholarship. We'll talk. We'll talk. Okay. I'll make time and everything. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll make all the sacrifices, but right? But you know what? I, I keep saying that because you have the qualities mm -hmm. to do that. And even if you don't do therapy or you might dabble in life coaching or something like that, you have the heart. You have the empathy. You have mm -hmm. the active listening skills. You have the understanding of how different things affect different people mm -hmm. you know you have that skill set yeah you know what i'm saying so i, I know you and you're doing a great job of getting them safe and, and and putting this platform and building from the ground up and maximizing it but you also have a unique skill set too mm -hmm. that fits right well and fits well into the work that we do I appreciate so, you. Yeah. So and, and you know I take it seriously when you say it. I don't yeah, I've never yeah. blown off whatever you said. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And everyone else sees it too. But yeah. it's just like, hey man, I could I you know me since twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. 2019. Yeah, 2019, 2018, something Yeah, like that. we met each other in 2018. That's when we started chatting. Been mm -hmm. doing work with each other intimately since 2019 to present. I mean, I went to your wedding. I really appreciate that. It was yes. a dope-ass wedding. Yeah. Right? And I agree with what you're Wait, saying. You I was at the wedding. Remember I pulled up? That's when you met Imani. You had the sneakers. You changed them. Remember it came through? I came later, though. Or the book release. Book mm -hmm. release. Yeah. Wedding or book release? I came for the book, book release, release, the yeah. birthday book release. The wedding, bro. You know the wedding was back in the day. 15. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was before me. Wait, my bad, my wedding? bad. But I mean, that book release looked like a wedding. Like, you had it in the courthouse. <laughs> everything was set up. Had the kids man, running around. Yeah, man. That was, he was vibing. decked out. Yeah, he was vibing in that zone. Yeah, you know, yeah. But, that's, uh, that's a good catch. My bad. That's a good yeah. catch. I was like, you was at the wedding. Nah, it's because of the courthouse set up. And you also, didn't you, your colors were black and gold, too. Yeah, it was it was themed like a wedding, black gold red. Yeah, yeah. but see the way I, I could you said it because the uh -huh. wedding reception had so many people. No, no, no. I was saying your life, and I was just like, I was a different person. You sure? Because I was like, <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> it was so many, yo. It was a bag of people, bro. Me and my wife got big family. Uh, man. We got big family. We're from the country. Man. That's funny as hell. You're like, hey, man. I know, I know a lot of people, Juice, but I don't know about 2015. You sure you was in there? Because we was wild. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's funny. Yeah, I'm That's sorry. funny. I'm sorry That'd be funny if we knew each other in 2015. We didn't clo get close until now with the work. Yeah, that would have been hilarious. Nah, that would have been hilarious. That, yeah, that, I mean, but that does happen. Sometimes. Yeah, that does happen. Sometimes. Yeah, because I just, I just mm -hmm. met one of my homeboys that I've been talking, kicking with, mm -hmm. group chat wise, phone wise since. 20, like 2019, 2020. Yeah, we just finally met in person today. This it, morning, it be like that. I know a couple of NFL players that I'm talking to right now who are amazing. One of them plays for uh, the mm -hmm. Bills. His birthday is next week. I was like, hey man, let me uh, get you a drink for your birthday. He's like, yo, just give that money to somebody else in need, and I'll be good on that. And like you know, building the relationships is yeah. Even if you have a lot of money. You still need to be treated nice by people to remember what it's right. like to be treated nice. And you right. still need to be appreciated on the relationship end. So it's like, you know, I'm really good with those things. Yeah. But 
why aren't colleges really good with having the courses for suicidal ideation and the handlement of folks that may be going through suicidal ideation presently? I think also too, um, we suicide and the research around it is still new too. Mm -hmm. Like when you say new, like how many years are we talking? I want to say if if and mental health is research around mental health is new especially with like the institutionalization where you know it wasn't just putting everybody with a diagnosis in state hospitals that like happened in the 70s mm -hmm. right and so suicide prevention and the way we talk about suicide and do suicide i mean in the last maybe 15 to 20 years has shifted mm -hmm. from what we used to know yeah and what we know now mm -hmm. um and so i would say maybe you know i can be corrected on this but you know it's, if, if, if mental health is from the 70s mm -hmm. and on, we talking about 25, 30 years, still trying to, you know, figure this out? So we're older than the concept that's called mental health right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because we, so we as a society still are embracing mental health. What have we accomplished with this new thing? Like, when you think off the top, what have we accomplished with this thing called mental health so far? I think we've accomplished the awareness piece, mm -hmm. right? I think we've accomplished the education piece. I think we've done a better job at the stigma piece, okay. even though it's still there, but mm -hmm. I think we've done a much better job. So I've been in the mental health field for 12 years. Okay. Um, starting from, you know, inpatient to now. Um, and I, I have seen a shift in the education, the awareness, the reducing of stigma. More people are talking about it. More people are having conversations mm -hmm. about it. Um, so we've done good at that. We have still tons of places to go. Yeah. Because like you said earlier, the interaction with do I have, can I afford housing? Do I have access to you know food? Do I have access to insurance? Mm -hmm. Do I have access to good well-being of life? All and, definitions of health. Yeah, and that affects your mental. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, we still find it hard to connect those two we things. We like to separate things. Yeah. As a country. Yeah. We like to separate those yeah. things. And yeah. it's not it's not separate. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think, and again, that's where the suicide prevention piece comes in. Because people still see suicide, or the, I guess the society, the folks who are making policies, look at suicide as a reactionary piece mm -hmm. need to be met with therapy or but in reality it's okay do I have access to can I afford my housing and my job's paying me enough can I afford my food can I take care of my family mm -hmm. do I have all these different things if I don't have that my quality of life sucks and then also mm -hmm. not all suicides are linked to depression Right. Some people just don't want to be here anymore exactly right yeah Some I mean people are fed up with life Rightfully so. Right. Right. Um, and then there is depression. And there's depression that and increases. There's it. anxiety. Yeah. But it's not you have depression, so you're going to be suicidal. So the box that mm -hmm. we've been framed in when it comes to suicidal ideation has now, it comes after depression. Oh, if you're suicidal, you're probably depressed. And it's like, no, that's not always the truth. Yeah, or I was, mm -hmm. he was always, they were always happy, they was always yeah. great, nice, and I don't understand. And, and it's like, us as humans, we don't register that we are only, like per day, we're only around each other eight hours a day. And that's if you're working mm -hmm. with each other. If we cross paths, maybe 15 to 45 minutes, mm -hmm. right? And in friendships, maybe four hours a day if it's on mm -hmm. the regular mm -hmm. and then you have times by yourself we as people are going to show you what we want you to see or what we would like to have yeah so for the person who was suicidal that well i thought they were happy they wanted to be happy and that's what they presented they that's presented they joy mm -hmm. they presented the chasing of joy mm -hmm. they presented the I want that thing and to get there this is what it looks like so I have to do those things mm -hmm. so when I hear well when I met somebody like you I came to realize that in 2018 when I lost my friend I never had the proper tools mm -hmm. and we were never surrounded by the proper people 
So now with this platform, I get to surround everybody via social media with the proper people. Hey, here's their, this yeah. therapist, this therapist, this therapist. This is the kind of therapy they do. This is the work that they yeah. do. The last episode I dropped on Monday, what does it mean to be a therapist? I think that's a very important conversation mm -hmm. because there's a lot of therapists out here from the discussions I have that don't actually know what it means to be a therapist. They just know that they are a therapist and what does that look like? Mm -hmm. And then you have people like me who come forward and say, hey, being a therapist looks like those things, but you don't have to be all those things. Mm -hmm. But if you'd like to be a therapist, especially if you're a man in this therapist space, shout out to Dr. B, shout out to Lakeith. Yes, sir. Then you are going to have to be responsible, especially as a black man, for mental health in a whole different way. Shout out yes. to Kier. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, God, yes. And yes. because of that, yes. I don't, my job, I'm not calling things out. I'm not saying, you didn't do this. I'm saying, hey, what's the better version of this look like? And how many of us or the people that are doing this work are willing to bring those things to the community, mm -hmm. right? The weight is different. It is. It is. Different and that's why I always ask, hey, man, how you doing? You taking care of yourself? I think I ask you, are you taking care of yourself more than the work that you're doing? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always. Yeah, you always checking in, making sure I'm good, making sure I'm <laughs> doing what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> uh, you know, but you know, sometimes it get caught up, and I think that's you know, it's a balance, man. Um, with t well, we, that question about you know what does it mean to be a therapist, man? I always say it, man. Power and privilege. You have the power and privilege to influence um, somebody who is maybe at their lowest state, a most vulnerable state. Mm -hmm. And you have the power and privilege to influence. You have the privilege to be there, to listen to that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a privilege. Because that then, person lets you do that. You do have the privilege to also do work for the background. Shout out Dr. Hip. Yeah. Hip yeah. is the reason that Jory and I met because he challenged her, hey, you should go to more mental health events, more outings, go yeah. meet more people. And then after sitting down with her, I realized, oh, she knows Hip, and Hip is my guy. Right. Who lives around the corner from here. Really? Funny enough, yes, he lives around the I corner from here. I right? Hip in a minute. That's my guy, man. And, but Hip is one of the therapists and the folks in the mental health field who's like, hey, I want to do things in the background because you do need someone to facilitate these moments and the, hey, if you go outside, you'll meet the people, but you have to go outside. You got to do it. It's going to take a certain amount of effort. You got to. It's going to take days you don't want to do, but you do have to do it. Yeah. And that encouragement piece is a very necessary part of all the work that we're doing because this is voluntary work. Mm -hmm. No matter how big your platform is, even when the platform starts paying you, you're now being paid for the voluntary work. But all the work we're doing is volunteer. This is this is yeah. your volunteering. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Nah, nah. Gay cameras, nah. doing the interviews, doing the research, making nah. sure you're reinforcing your knowledge. Now, nah. shout out Dr. Martin, everybody else putting it together. Now, nah, now, nah. yeah, now. Nah. Invoices ah. need to get paid. Oh no, of course, of course. Uh, when you get invited this, out this, to the cookouts, let's put the disclaimer out there. Sitting on the panel, we'll be coming to reach you know, out and asking and for being free, a part of the mental stuff. events. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, no. Pay, yeah. pay my peoples. Yeah, pay our people. Mm -hmm. All right, just no. But, um, but yeah, most of it, you won't get. You, there, there's never a number. And if you're focused on the payoff, you're not going to get there. Right, because there's never going to be a number to equate to all the work that we do in this, this space. Yeah, never. So you got to figure out what that number is comfortable you're comfortable with mm -hmm. and ride with that. Because I always don't go, if you're committed to it and you're genuine about this work, you always don't go above and beyond. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you're not going to get paid that worth for that. You, you just not. And that's cool. That's You got to be cool with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if, if you're not, then it's going to become a, 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 a chore to do. You know, um, and so I tell people all the time, like even when we talk about like paid or not paid stuff, engagements, it's like, but look how much stuff I have up for free. Mm -hmm. You know, if you need to know something, there's the book, right, that you can get for a certain amount. You, there's the podcast, there's videos, I'm on Get Home Safe, I'm over here, I'm over there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of free, visible content yeah. to get out there. So yeah, it is, yeah, I got you. I'm gonna ask you a personal question. Go ahead. You have a therapist. I used to. Okay, so yeah. you took a break from therapy for now. Uh, I would say I graduated out at this point mm -hmm. until it's something, you know, until I'm ready to come back and go back in. <laughs> What's two of the 
what's two of the most important pieces of, of advice your therapist has given you? Mm. One is belief in myself. Mm -hmm. And two is um, the boundary setting. Okay. So there might be times where I, I like waver and believe in who I am as a person and what I do and figuring out why this person did this or why this is not happening at this certain point in time and it's just like you know focusing on belief in yourself because you you got it all you're doing it, everything you need to do timing right mm -hmm. and so believe in yourself that in time things will happen and then the boundary piece because you know I give so freely but sometimes a lot of times you don't get that back yeah. Right, except, except for your loved ones and ones that really care about you. But um so monitoring how much I give. Mm -hmm. You know, even when I'm saying no or setting that boundary, even though I might have the time and energy, but it's gonna cost me. You know. So I would say that those two, those are the things pop right in my mind. To hear him saying it now, because I had a black male therapist who looked like me, you know what I'm saying, talk like me and we had like similar tones I can still hear him in my head saying certain things yeah is therapy a privilege hmm because I don't think everybody has access to it yeah it could be a privilege and that's if you got insurance or you don't got insurance right we had that insurance conversation yeah. yesterday yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I was telling Juice and I had a conversation, man. I was, you know, I think I went to get a, a checkup, an uh, annual checkup, and men, please go get your annual checkups, um, medical checkups with your doctors, uh, if you can. But I, 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 you know, doing my checkup, paying for the labs, you know, I got a health savings plan, which, you know, prepays pretty much for the year, you know, for like out of pocket expenses, like co pays, you know, medicine. Um, you know, and random other stuff that comes up medically, right? And as I was giving the card up and, you know, putting forth the effort of doing it, I was like, man, I get to, I have this insurance. I have my education that has put me in a position to get this good insurance to cover the cost of these routine visits. This eye exam for eyes, because I can't see worth nothing. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I need insurance because I can't see. And it's not the, oh, well, I can still see and function if I don't have my glasses. No, I can't function if I don't have my glasses or contact lenses. But the fact that I had my insurance to cover these costs, even though my, my frames were still expensive after the fact because my lenses and my prescription, we need to talk about that. Like, I can't, you know what I'm saying? I have a, a correctional lenses on my license that I need that is on my driver's license, right? Um, but... I just couldn't help but think, like, one, how much of a blessing it is, but at the same time, think about other people who didn't have access to that health insurance to get just a routine checkup that might cost for them. And yeah, they got free clinics and things that provide for that, but everybody doesn't have access to that. You know, everybody doesn't have access or the privilege to have a long-standing relationship with the doctor. My doctor, my medical doctor, I've been working with her probably since the last 10, 15 years. No, but everybody doesn't have that privilege. Same thing with my eye doctor, right? You know, and I, my eye doctor, I've worked with him since I was five, and I'm, I'll be 36 next month. He finally retired a year or two ago and broke my heart because I'm like, you're my doctor. Like, you know what I'm saying? But that's a privilege. That's a privilege. It's a privilege to have this health insurance that's good. Some people don't have, have health insurance, and it costs more to have the health insurance than it, than it would just by having, you know, just having regular insurance. Now, you got the Medicaid piece and Obamacare that came out that expanded insurance for folks, especially black folks who, who usually are at a, uh, usually doesn't, don't have insurance as much as their white counterparts. Um, but there's still barriers to that too, cost-wise. So I just, I just, I was, it was interesting you asked that question because I know for a fact, maybe like the last week or week before, I sat in that office like, this is, this is a, a privilege that I have this to be able to do this, you know, so, yeah. And that's why I stopped telling people to get therapy. <clears throat> yeah. So, we changed the pitch 
coming out of the pandemic, we being me, of mm-hmm. course, <laughs> to what do we have access to that's affordable and fun? Because therapy in and of itself is already so heavy. Yeah. Right? You you have to you have to go outside and knock the mats out to get the dust off or things that you weren't even aware of was in your house mentally. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And then you have to find a dustpan, and you have to figure out. Oh man, I don't. I don't actually own a dustpan. I don't own a vacuum cleaner. I don't. I don't own soap to wipe down the countertops. I don't. I don't own a Swiffer. I've, yeah. I've never had to clean this before because the house always took care of itself. Yeah. And you didn't realize. No, the house didn't take care of itself. You just never really looked into the cabinets correctly. Right. You never you never opened that closet. Mm-hmm. Right? Because you've always used the same dish. You've always used the mm-hmm. same glass. You've always used the same bowl. You've always used the same fork, knife, spoon. Never went to the basement. <laughs> never went to the basement. And now you realize there's all these things that I have to take care of via therapy. And as much as the last words I heard were, if I had therapy, I think things could have gone better than this Mm -hmm. I think to myself well I have therapy now and I've given people therapy and I'm worried they're not going to have enough money to afford therapy what does life look like when they have to take care of themselves and they can't afford therapy Mm -hmm. what are the other options who are the other people that I can trust to send them to yeah which is really important that's why folks like Britt and Brandon Mm -hmm. are so important who I do work with on the yoga side or work on the meditation side or China they're important when it comes to people seeing black women find joy outside of the US yeah because I want people to keep in mind there are other options of taking care of yourself And at a certain point, the life that you've dreamed for yourself may be something that becomes negotiable and you really start to think, hey, do I need this life that I wanted so much? Right. Or can I find joy and happiness in another life that's not this? Yeah. And Miss Unique Jordan, I always like say her name all the time. Right. Right. Um, She does such a great job in her content of not only touching on the inner child, but touching on what does that look like as an adult now when you not only face the fact that you may have given people who didn't deserve you things that they Mm -hmm. now hold on to Mm -hmm. and how do you take that back and not involve the person who did that to you not intentionally that's just a part of the environment side of the conversation yeah i don't think therapy is the end all be all Mm -hmm. i mean i think it's just one portion and it is intense i think it's a part of the process yeah absolutely it's part of the process Mm because you would do the same thing if you want to get into like so for example like yeah i wanted to lose weight because i got too heavy last year really yeah you be in shape all the time though not my shape that I want. To. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. So, so you yeah. think, all right, this basketball are coming out here. Okay, yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah, I got yeah. you. I but, got but you. I will say too, also, like, uh-huh. like I've I've dealt with blood, high blood pressure and has jumped back uh, back in this fold again. So I'm back on high blood pressure medication. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know it was stress. I know it was because I was being sedentary and not really being active anymore. And I had got heavier to my heaviness. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to get into, you know losing weight you know getting back getting that back down getting that back under control and just figuring that out yeah and so a part of that process is physical Mm -hmm. working out Mm -hmm. being intentional about doing that each and every day yeah that helps free up some of that 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 mental cloud or that judgment around how you feel about yourself how you wake up how your joints crack ache you know what i'm saying you're a little more stable Mm -hmm. um but then also how you look and feel about yourself right well, you start, and that could lead to depressive based symptoms or being sad right mm-hmm. or self esteem issues yeah you might not necessarily go through the therapy process to see a therapist to work through that you might go talk to a physical trainer mm-hmm. you might go talk to juice yeah let me get back in the gym and do some things so to, you know if, if, if that's something and that's where I think you know is part of that process if there's emotional baggage if there's trauma if there's you know mindset or you know any type of diagnosis is might there that might be there then that's where you can go into therapy and process and work through those things and mm-hmm. figure some stuff out but a lot of it can be deep and, and sometimes heavy work because it is heavy work a lot of folks don't talk about that it is heavy work mm-hmm. and you can also go in there with the positive stuff too like sharing 
you know, the joys, the wins. I always used to tell clients when I was in therapy, when I was providing therapy, yes, share your successes with me. Share your wins with me. Mm-hmm. Share what makes you happy with me. Because that's part of your healing process too. So if I know that, then I can help work through other things that might be tough. But again, like I think too, we've also done a weird job at posing therapy to just be this really hard like thing that's going to be super hard and in depth without mm-hmm. also showing the other side of it. Too. Yeah. So it is, a, but it's not the end all be all. It's a process. Therapy is a place where you truly get to laugh about your pain when the process is said and done. And you yeah. hope by the time you're done with the process, that laugh can be an actual laugh and not be the tool that you use to deal with the pain. Mm-hmm. It can be a reflective moment. Yeah. You know, it can be a reflective moment um, and of joy, of like, or looking at, uh, look what I overcame. Mm-hmm. Look what I went through. And I've had that moment. I mean, I've had, I think that's been the ben- most beneficial part for me of therapy is I've been able to process and look back over my life and that sounds real churchy I always say it's look not back churchy man you yeah, look back over my life nah, but the no. church church isn't the only place that you get to look back at your life it's the saying though mm-hmm. no no I get my, you my, my, my saints you a know. church boy yeah. no, no, I get my saints you know, you look, yeah. you look back yeah. over your life yeah. you look <laughs> back <laughs> all the things brother Taylor brother you. Taylor let's talk about yeah. you your um, life man look you yeah. been looking back uh, my soul you know so that's the churchy piece of it yo but you know I just I've been a sometimes I get in the moments of reflection, man. I just think about, you know, the things that I have went through, mm-hmm. shared or not. Yeah. And then how I've overcame those and worked through those processes and then seeing some of those past situations for what it was because in the moment I couldn't see it. Mm-hmm. I was just pissed off about it, upset about it, just going through it. But then yeah. got on the other side and said, you know what? That was probably for the best. Mm-hmm. You know, that relationship didn't work out or that situation didn't work out because this would have landed this this way for you. Mm-hmm. You know, or this is why you went through that in order to get to where you're at today. Um, and, and that's just always a blessing to me, man, to be reflecting in that moment because it makes you humble, but it makes you appreciate life so much more. Yeah. I, um, I sat there and uh, I think I posted one day on Instagram. Like, they got the little notes thing now. It was almost like Twitter for Instagram, but it's not threads, right? And I just like, you know, I was just thinking about life and just in general and just looking around at everything. And I was like, man, it's not even like every day is a blessing, right? But every minute of your life is a blessing. Because of so much happening in the world, what's going on, what could have happened to you. It's every minute, every second is a blessing. And you have to appreciate that fact. If you appreciate that fact, it makes it easier to get through life. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's going to be the easiest and the, the hardest, the, the, the easiest thing to get through, but it makes it a little bit easier to go for, to push on, you know what I'm saying, with what's going on, if you're able to appreciate those things. For the person who's not able to appreciate those things and they see life is a curse, how do you... How do you approach having a conversation with someone who no longer has hope? Who no longer has hope? Mm-hmm. Have like hope for the better tomorrow. I want to ask the situation if they are in a place of wanting to change. Mm-hmm. If they want to make the steps forward. Because it's going to be tough. Yeah. And to not, to be in a place where I, I don't have the hope anymore or that's your place. That's that's responsible for what you want to do. I can't knock you for that, right? I can't say that's wrong, right? You know, and I think we have to sit with those folks sometimes until they're ready to move forward. So sometimes, Juice, there isn't a right word or answer. It's to be present with that person and just, just let them know that I'm here. I know it's tough, I know it sucks, I know you lack in hope, but I just wanted to know I'm here for you, right? Or whatever we need to do, let's, let's just figure it out. But I think sometimes we get hung up on too, which may be part of therapy and a mental health thing, is always having to have to have something to say to people. We don't always have to have the answers. Yep. Yeah. We don't always have to have the answers. 
Isn't it ironic that a lot of therapists have come to the realization that it's not your job to have the answers, but they still feel inclined to have to have the answer, like to have a moral responsibility to have the answer for this situation if I'm called upon? Yeah. Yeah. But that's not really taught because we are taught to be able to also understand that we are not there to fix that person. Yeah. And we are also taught to be okay with silence. Mm -hmm. Then that gets into what's your role and why you're doing that work. Yeah. Because you feel like if you take it personal that what you're saying is not landing or helping, not that's something's wrong. Because <laughs> people have their own stuff. They're going to ready when they change and they need change and they want to change, right? And we can't help everybody, but we have to, we can guide along and give tools, but it's not our job to just be able to change people. That's not our job. It's not what therapists do. What's a, what do therapists do? We just talked about it. We, 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 but if you could put it in three sentences, three to four sentences. We guide. We support. We process out. We break it down enough to put the ball back into your court to say these are your options. These are some of the things that are, have been happening. This is how it affects you. This is what you can do with it. The choice is yours. That's on you. But that's going to let you know this is what, how it's affecting you. This is what has happened to you. This is what could happen. Here's your options. Go with it. Has it been a breath of fresh air letting go of the version of Trey that's a therapist to embrace the version of Trey that's a professor? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I love teaching, man. I don't know. I did not know this was here and, and coming, but I love teaching, man. I, I do, man. I love because I, I maybe because I wish I had more of that when I was going through grad school and undergrad, and I had some great professors, but I just like there's a certain unique feeling teaching with your people and embracing the HBCU experience, and then ushering in a new brand of social workers and therapists that look, talk, sound been through some of the things you've been through. That's a different experience, man. So it's, all, it's the same almost experience I used to get when helping, you know, black men, black women in therapy as well. Helping my community. I'm passionate about that work, man. Um, the therapist side is always going to be with me. Cuts on and off all the time. But it's a breath of fresh air to be able to just give freely and not have to, you know, hold so much weight in that. Yeah, but I love teaching, man. I think I've had to learn to let go mm -hmm. as of late. Like, even the people that I'm helping. Because, mm -hmm. like, I'm very big on the delivery. Did I deliver what I said I would? Yeah. Right. And there's people who, in the past, have, like, reached out for help, reached out for resources. And... I'm really big on I'll hold your hand if you need me to, but if you no longer need your hand to be held, I can read when that time has come, even if you're not willing to tell me. Like, for example, one of my folks looking for resources, reached out to him. He came out with like, basically he's in the same work that you do. And right now he has like his own routine, wake up meditate sit down journal and i'm really proud of him for that and the reason he had to do that was therapy is expensive yeah and with the price of groceries and everything else going up i understand why therapy is expensive but like people still need to be able to afford said help that we're telling them to get mm -hmm. or advising them to get recently i reached out to them let them know hey you can hit these folks up here's the resource they got a sliding scale of everything you wanted there you go there was no response and i said 
I bet I did my job. Yeah. That's <laughs> the same question you asked me, right? <laughs> what more? You know? You, but but folks don't realize if you ask me for help, whether it's four months, three months, or two weeks from now, I'm always waking up every day and thinking, hey, did I give them that help? And even if you've moved into a new point in your life, you moving into a new point in your life doesn't mean you don't need that resource later down the road just because things are better now. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? So if I've advised you or I've, I've given you help or a resource, you will explore that option with or without me. Yeah. And if you don't explore that option, that is a choice you've made. And at all times, no matter how close or far we are in our relationship, I need to make space for your decisions. Yeah, it has nothing to do with me. Yeah. I've learned that in, in relationships with friends. And, Cause you know, one of the things is like, you can see, you might can see the fall, you might can see where they're going out a, a rabbit hole that might not be the best for them. Mm -hmm. And you speak up and say something and it's not receptive. Yeah. And then you start to feel a way or they get angry at you or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I could see what's going on to so try to help you. Yeah. But I had to learn, yo, you take my hands off of it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you the, give you what it is. Yeah. Or I'm not gonna give you what it is and make sure that, like I'll just wait till you, you want to come to me or have have that conversation. If you don't or not, I'll support whatever you wanna do. Mm -hmm. But I cannot hold it, take it personal if you don't receive or take what I'm saying, you know, and, and, and use it right then and there. Okay, bet. Got you. Facts. You know why? Yeah. I got two kids already. Yeah. <laughs> I got enough doing with, you know, raising them. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. just like that. So, man, I think that's, you know, to be a helper, because mm -hmm. you and me are helpers. Mm -hmm. It's hard to embrace that. You know, it's hard to be able to let go. It's a process. Yeah. You know, but once you get into that, you can help much more mm -hmm. because you're not overexerting yourself when that person might not be ready to change yet yeah take your hands off it. yeah you know so but and that's and that's and i think that's hard because most therapists most social workers most folks in the helping profession mm -hmm. are naturally helpers by nature yeah so when things aren't going the way they're supposed to or not seeing that results they take it personal yeah and overexert overextend maybe you know put more into something that doesn't need to it's just that person is going to take heed when they are ready to take heed and yeah. make the change i think uh when i first started this work that i did with get home safe there were moments where i was almost manic in the way that i felt i needed to help people mm -hmm. but then there was this little voice in my head that was telling me hey you can't become the people you're trying to help Right. Because then, yeah. Who will help you? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I agree. It's just tough for helpers, man. It is. Yeah. <laughs> helpers, man. You could do me a favor. You could flip that screen towards yourself. Just the screen. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. All right. You get to see yourself. You get to see what you look like on camera because you're killing it. You see the angles? Nice. You nice. see the angles, nice. man? I'll be giving it up in here, man. I see what you're doing. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, man. You know, you're picking up what I'm putting down. Yeah, exactly. What was I going to say? You can do me a favor and check your calendar to see what other questions that I have for today on your cell phone. I can't because my cell phone's currently yeah, yeah, yeah. tied Absolutely. up. Being a, the main screen, letting us know what's going on here and whatnot. That was in depth, though. Because I think that a lot of people needed to hear that, man, from a helper standpoint. Like what I said. Yeah, because I think we want to do good. We want to help everybody, but we can't help everybody. And yeah. there's time frames on that stuff. Mm -hmm. What time is it also? 314. Let's see. Okay, cool. So we got like 15 more minutes and then we'll set up for in my shoes. Yeah. That's right on time. Education in schools, SI Awareness Month, Mental Health Fatigue, Mental Health, Men's Mental Health Stats, getting year three, a college professor, and then... So it's supposed to be year two. Year two, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then the nurses barbershop talk in my shoes stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's in my mm -hmm. shoes. All right. Yeah. All right, you can put the phone away. <laughs> Keep the consistency. Appreciate you. Wow, yeah. I really did that off top. You did? Wow, damn. 
I think I think I want us to wrap up with two main points. Dr. Martin. Yeah. I really appreciate her work. She's good, man. I appreciate it. I love seeing her clips and how she breaks stuff down. Her honesty, her approach. I could tell the realms in which she's starting to reach into Mm -hmm. are places that we think of and someone is simply opening the door and she's opening the door for us right now. Are you seeing DMV? I think. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Um... And I think I think her work is important. One day, one day I'll bump into her. I've I've been explaining this to Jory because she's going to be big. My host, who's a pediatrician. Yeah, man. It's it's very oh, she's different. A she's a pediatrician. Oh man, I thought she was a um, med- well, she's a medical doctor. Yes, but she specializes in pediatricians. She's a pediatrician, That's and right. I haven't seen any pediatricians in this field yet. You know how rare that is to see a black woman yeah, pediatrician. Yeah, yeah, in Southeast. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I've been advising her to prepare for things to move very fast for her. Mm -hmm. And as a friend, I'm gonna let her know all the mistakes that are gonna happen for decisions that she makes. So she doesn't have to make them because I've made them already. I explained to her that when it comes to the work that I do with people, I think it's very important to embrace the notion of surrounding yourself with people that have done it. Yeah. So they could advise you when things just move faster. Mm-hmm. She's done two to three mental health events, one all male panel in February. She did a back to school event for some kids mm-hmm. in terms of making a space for girls to get their hair braided before school and I thought that was so important. Nice, yeah. And right now I told her I want to match her event. So for every event she does, I want to do the male version of that event. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start tackling these things together but it's so important to facilitate opportunity for people that want to do it that you know they're dedicated to it instead of waiting to see if they succeed or fail. Yeah, give them the tools. Because her heart is in it already. That's why I'm like, hey, here's a camera. For you, I was like, hey, here's a camera. You feel what I'm saying? Like, the people that are working, why would you make the work harder for folks that are already working instead of just making it easier and making them aware, hey, if you went this route, it would have taken this long. So how about we speed up six months into two months? And I feel like that's what Dr. Martin does when I look at the timeline. That's why I repost her. I got to. Here, mm-hmm. he's, he's always speeding up things for me. Yeah. He'll say something and I'm like, ah, yeah. he did it again. Yeah. <laughs> he, says it, though. he says it in a way that the delivery, right, delivery, the delivery is, is so, so clean. Smooth. It's so clean. It's so smooth. And I'm just like, but, but I think about how many books did he read to get that insight? How many movies has he watched to get in that insight? How many people has he listened to and talked to to get that five minutes or that one minute of insight? Mm-hmm. That's what I think about. I, I, I get so jealous. I'm excited to get jealous about what people have done because my mind doesn't get jealous of what they have. I get jealous of that work ethic that I haven't come across yet in my efforts to get there. It's the skill set, though. Like, I, I, <clears throat> I look at the, like, I'm very particular about the, the tone, the cadence, the mm-hmm. words, how words come together, yeah. how clean they are, how smooth they are, and how impactful, how you drive them home. Like, I have my guys who, um, uh, Dr. James Bell, who's mm-hmm. in the equity space work, and he does Equity Matters, his podcast, and the way he formulates his words, but when he makes wants to make an emphasis, he drives that word home, and it's impactful, so you feel it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then my guy, Chris, who does hip-hop social work, but his innovative off-the-cuff approach to talking about topics and making it relatable Mm -hmm. right in those moments and so i I study all of that i study like you like i told you i was last time i was was spitting back how you approach and how you interview right and how that comes off and how that you know may may seem and and just being mindful of this whole time that you're building this while interviewing 
knowing the angles, knowing the, the, the different places you want to put stuff, why you should cut it this way, why you should cut it that way. Yeah, that's, that's skill, that's repetition. That's learning from mistakes, that's researching, that's doing everything in one. Everybody don't have that work ethic, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody yeah. don't have that I, work I, ethic. I don't, I don't blame people for not having no, I that don't. work ethic. It's I, consuming. I, I, it's consuming. It is. I blame folks who may not be realistic. Hey, you just don't have the work ethic, and that's okay. Don't make, that's don't make everybody feel bad about the work that they're putting in. Because remember, there's people who are like, well, I didn't have the work ethic, but that's your fault because I... No. I, I watched an interview where... Um, this famous Dean lineman for the Buccaneers was talking about um, at age, he was like his sophomore year of high school, Gerald, oh. something Gerald, he was on the um, 2010 podcast or something like that, the one that has Deshaun Jackson and oh, Sean McCoy. Oh, Lord, I said, I'm going to say Gerald Ford, I'm thinking about No, 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 but the point is, his dad was <laughs> like, hey, do you want to go to college? He's like, nah, I'm not really sure, I'm thinking about it. And he said he was fat at that time. And his dad was like, well, I just want to let you know, college just don't like fat people. <laughs> wow. But I related to that because I was like, damn, I don't know if at the age 15, 16, when I was already fat, if I could have handled my dad saying college just don't like fat people. And I would have had the reaction he had, which his reaction was to lose 50 pounds and always keep his weight down. Yeah. And now he was one of the greatest D linemen for the Buccaneers. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it was McCoy. No, no, it was it was something. Jer I, if you look it up on your phone, it will come up. Just yeah. type in YouTube and then type in uh, Sean McCoy and uh, Deshaun Jackson interview. Yeah, it's yeah, their yeah, most yeah. recent podcast. And he was like, you know, that's how I became the beast that I was at Tampa Bay. And that's how I got all those contracts. And that's how I stayed in shape. And that's how I dominated the market when it came to Oklahoma. And like and my mind immediately was like, damn, you know, if my dad did it, and I was like, no, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have handled it that way. You you remember who you were when you were sixteen? Yeah, people respond differently to those type of things. Yeah, you weren't you you have tougher skin now because you wanted the yeah. thing and you understood who who I am after these pro trials compared to who I was before. Two very different people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And because I know those people. You would have been like, ah, he a hater. He don't know what it is. And it's like, nah, your dad, your dad ran laps around you on the track when you was in high school to show you an example of how, what hard work looked like. Mm -hmm. Instead of you obsessing over the amount of effort he put in to get that fast and to be that explosive, you just kept running on the track thinking, dang, why is he this much faster than me? You, you never considered, yo, he had a better stride than you. You never considered yeah, exactly. he was running for years. You yeah. never considered mm -hmm. in Jamaica on the island, he was going to different parishes to race people so he could prove he was the fastest because mm -hmm. there was something in him that said, you have to be faster than any man breathing on this earth. Right. That's, I was like, you were focused on the wrong thing. So now you get it because you've done the pro tryouts. Now you get it because you slept in cars for your birthday for tryouts. Now you get it because you paid that price. But before that, the hunger was different. Yeah. You didn't get it. You were just a fat kid that was being fat. Yeah. You know, and again, that that's an interesting take because I remember, like, for basketball, mm -hmm. like, I had the work ethic, but I didn't have the work ethic like, like I, I could have put forth more effort and my dad was tough on me with stuff but you know telling me to practice this practice that mm -hmm. um and he would tell me if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing right or yep. I'm not as good as this person da, da, da. but he always believed I could he saw the potential and I don't know I've always been excelled in academics because I couldn't play basketball if I didn't have my academics together mm -hmm. but I some of what I didn't receive or didn't get to in basketball turn into academics, turn into business, mm -hmm. you know, turn into creativity. And I didn't understand it at first because it was always like, okay, well, you're super passionate and you're super over the top about stuff, like yeah. super detailed. But now as I've gotten older and now found my people, mm -hmm. right, I understood the creativity that I have that just makes me who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. And my work ethic is super high. Yeah. That's cool, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, but 
and I'm a passionate person about the stuff that I'm passionate about, and that's okay. But for sometimes it was like, oh well, you're too old passionate about that. You're too mm -hmm. thought about that. You need to tone it down. That's something. what folks will say to you. Yeah, but you're like. If yeah. I tune it, if I tune it, if I tune it down, yeah. the product's going to be different. Mm -hmm. The pro It's not... It's not going to be the same. The things you guys are proud of, the things you guys are excited mm -hmm. that I've done, the things you guys look back and you say, dang, he really did that. None of that will happen. So why would I listen to you? Mm -hmm. Why would I stop? Why would I tone mm -hmm. it down? Why would I make myself smaller just because you can't keep up? Right. Mm -hmm. But... Now in society, we're starting to see a mental health fatigue. Yeah. There's a fatigue when it comes to the topic of mental health that I'm very aware of. That's why when I drop a clip, I drop a very particular clip and I'm like, everyone could benefit from this. And then I leave mm -hmm. and I go do something else. I go, hey, let's let's clean some shoes and tell real stories. Let's yeah. let's just have a talk about the importance of this thing. But what was that time in life? Let's talk about nostalgia that pours into who you are let's the focus of mental health isn't mental health it's the person yeah. it starts with the person who are you what are you going through why is this happening who are you before do you recognize what happiness looks like do you recognize what joy in your life looks like yeah. do you do you remember the time all right if you could remember the time why don't you have access to that anymore even if you get professional help or you don't get professional help anymore what, does life have to be rough the older that you get? No. Or have we made so many choices that rough is the only thing we recognize and we've lost the flavor for the things that we're doing? And that's why... You said something that I used to say all the time to clients. Where has the happiness gone? Where has the joy gone? Yeah. Yeah. And if you find it in church, go back to church. But remember, when you go back to that church, it's not going to be the same church anymore. Mm -hmm. Right? So are you willing to accept the, the amalgamation of changes that have happened around you and in the world? You got to evolve. You got to adjust as well. Mm -hmm. So some of that is also too, like, you know, like not adjusting what makes you happy because that changes as you get older. Yeah. So, for example, I'm, you know, I teenage years, I was big in the cars, big in the basketball, still big in the sneakers. Mm -hmm. And at some point in time, the cars dwindled away a little bit as far as my passion for it. But now it's slowly coming back. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, you know, and then just, but it was a simpler time because I could, I could put a system and some rims and some lights on the car for probably under a thousand dollars. But mm -hmm. now it's a lot more expensive, right? Yeah. But that was my passion. That was my outlet. Um, and so you have to be creative in that um, because things change. You get family, you got mm -hmm. career, mm -hmm. you know, things shift. I remember weekends, right? I working at the hospital, making my little money and just taking that money and just put it into my cars for, you know, interest. And I'll be sitting on a, I remember, I always think about this time where I'm at, it was a year, so it was a Sunday evening, we wasn't playing ball that day, and I was just out there messing with my system in my car. No bills, no worrying about stuff, just worrying about going to school the next day, yeah. finishing up the senior year, finishing up, you know, finishing up, going for my senior year, finishing up that. That's all I had to worry about, and then I went to Best Buy to go get a system, and I rewired my system within two, three hours. That was my Sunday, right? That's what brought me happiness and joy. But I don't have five hours to just sit outside in the, in the yard, listen to music, and tweak with my car anymore. I have a family, I got a career, I got church, I got, you know, take care of my family, you know, all these different things, I got friends. Like, I have, I don't have that amount of time anymore. And so a lot of times that transition is hard for folks to transition into, okay, well now what do I do to make some type of happiness or joy in my life? and not make everything so mundane, not make everything about the work, not make everything about my profession, my career, not make everything about my family, right? And, and, and not have no time for myself, you know? And that, that's a hard thing to shift and adjust because nobody talks about it. Just, they always say, just do what you gotta do or figure it out. No, what do I have to do to adjust to find the new joys in life as I, adult that's emerging or growing and getting older and that's and that's hard sometimes so you gotta you gotta find it you gotta search for it and it's tough and it takes years and it takes time and it takes some attention right but it's not going to be the same thing that 
you know, you enjoy 20, your 20s and your 30s and your, your teenage years. It's going to evolve, you know? And so, I don't know, man. I just, that, that, I'm really big on that transitions in life piece because, especially for us as men, because we just don't, we don't never share it. And then we look up at like in our 40s and our 50s and we don't even know what we like anymore. Somebody, oh, what you like? I don't know. Yeah, you know, just, you know, chilling, vibing, or just making money. <laughs> if, if all you like to do is just make money, you in a, you, it's going to be hard for you. One of my boys who I ain't talked to in like five years hit me up today. Let me know about some art stuff he working on. And I say, hey, man, how you been? He's like, you know, chilling, making money. I wanted to be like, bitch, tell me the truth. If I ask you what the fuck is going on with you, don't tell me you're chilling, making money, man. I stubbed my toe this morning. Yeah. It's been terrible. Yeah. My favorite pot of coffee isn't really potting right now. Yeah. But I'm glad I got to talk to you. Let's sit down and have yeah. lunch. Man, I miss you. Let's just joke around like we used to have those random conversations. And I just I tell folks like, hey man, if you hit me up and I ask you how I'm doing, it, I don't. You don't need to dump all your trauma, but don't don't give me the responses you gave everybody else this week. Like, yeah. tell me what's going on I'm in good. your life. I'm making wanna, it. I want to hear about your life. Life is life. Man, I forgot to pay my taxes. IRS is on my ass. Thank you. Thank you. Well, 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 what are we going to do, man? Is, you want to sit and talk about this over some brisket? I yeah, like brisket. Yeah, that's the let's eat time. some brisket. You feel what I'm saying? Let's let's joke around. Let's still make space for the friends to be friends. Let's and not all the friendship. Let's not treat everybody like an episode of The Office and we're trying to do everything that we can <laughs> to walk on eggshells around each other. Let's evolve. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's like, you know, I get it, though. I get that there's going to be unfamiliarity with I haven't talked to this person in years. But you know what? I'd rather take the risk of being honest with this person and really chatting it up with them yeah. versus giving them the plain Jane that I'm supposed to give everybody else and be like, well, at least we didn't piss each other off in this convo. Piss me off, please. That just give me something to talk about or at least reflect on that and be like, ah, maybe I didn't handle my friend correctly. Yeah, this is the history, man. I, yeah. I, I looked at my group chats, man. I'm a, appreciative of them. Group chats. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not the toxic group chats, but yeah. the, the healthy ones, man. And I don't think I'm, no, no, I'm actually part of three group chats now I think about it. Yeah. Um, we can have conversation about social work. We can have conversation about, you know, family, being dads, being mm -hmm. husbands, you know, church. But I, I like the diversity, right? Because I can have my group chat. We can be talking about sneakers, sports one day, man. Mm -hmm. And then we live texting each other about the debate, about politics, you yeah. know, about lawn care. Like, you know, so that's one of the bigger things that we talk about sometimes. Like, you know, and I, I tweeted this or posted, like, man, get you some folks, man, like, especially for us as men, like, that mm -hmm. that know how to, if you're in this, the, the rural area you, and you want to learn how to do lawn, yawn work, Y'all work. Put yourself around, surround yourself around people who know how to do y'all work. Yeah. And so we sharing different. You know, one of the things I did this summer and this spring was I wanted to get my yard better. I'm used to cutting grass and doing stuff, but not the whole maintenance piece. Yeah. So we shared like, okay, what seed you using? What fertilizer you using? Mm -hmm. What irrigation system you using? How many times you watering? How many times you laying this down? Right. Just having that conversation, then we sharing pictures. Yo, let's see the let's see the yard. What's going on? Mm -hmm. And one of my mans, it was funny to me because we we, we social workers we talk about you know sneakers things like that sports. Yeah. But he was like, yo. And we just, you know, joking, like, you know, talk about wash, say, we call it wash content. But he was like, yo, I know we talking about da 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 but yo, Trey, what's good with the yard? Show me the yard. And I just freshly cut the yard, took a picture. It's what it is. I would have I would have gone out there. I would have put the measuring tape right into the yard. I was like, you see that? The perfect the half perfect inch line. cut. Hey, man. You see that right right across. Yeah. I'm going to go to the other side of Leon. You see that? That side of the yard is the Listen. perfect half inch cut too. Listen. You see what I'm saying? Nah, Guess man. what that other corner is on. They all half inches, all right? Because your boy is on it. Across. That's it, man. I sent the picture to my, uh, my yeah. wife and she was like, yo, this is like a, a, uh, a, um, a golf, golf, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, you're yeah, right. That's what yeah, it looks like. Look at that. Yeah. that but we green, use less water. It's green, but we use it. less water. We use less water. Yeah, because them golf courses be be spending mad money on yeah, water. It's yeah, it's on crazy. It's 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 yeah. rare to even to do just make and keep your yard up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But so I can only imagine like a golf course. But stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. I, 
to me back in the day I'm cutting grass yeah. like two acres yeah that's my job at the house my mom's house you know what I'm saying like cut two acres a yard mm -hmm. I have less than that now but then it's like I have to manage this yard yeah you know what I'm saying and yeah. that takes me away from the work because sometimes we get so especially for us as creatives and business owners we get caught up in the work so much mm -hmm. that we don't have those outlets that's an outlet for me even though sometimes it's tough and it sucks sometimes but I get joy on practicing learning I had to learn all that stuff this spring like do you know do you know what your burnout looks like yeah when you when you're burned out do you recognize your burnout? oh yeah absolutely all right what's your burnout look like my burnout yeah like um, oh I'm toasty right now my burnout is forgetfulness mm -hmm. um, I'm not as sharp mm-hmm and then I'm also it's my body gives off a like a signal. Mm -hmm. It just gives off a signal like it's almost like your phone dying. Yeah, it's like a warning. Hey, five percent. Yeah, two percent. Ooh, we out here. Yeah, and I'm known to run myself down. And so what I've been trying to practice, um, and then I also too I get sick more. Oh. Yeah, I get sick. Man. I remember when you would get sick, you'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. sick. And I'd be like, man, you've been sick a lot lately. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was because my, my daughter had just gotten to yeah. the germs. The kids. The kids. kids. The kids. The super spread. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. I don't know what to do. It's just trying to throw. I ain't never had that in a long time. But, you know, um, so I, that was me building my immunity back up. And I was working from home. Yeah. So I had my immunity. I had strong immunity because I used to work mm -hmm. in hospitals all the time yeah and then she's like the hell out of it yeah yeah, yeah yeah so my so a lot of folks don't know their burnout time so i always mm -hmm. tell people what's your capacity just like the, the thing on your own computer mm -hmm. you know you got 256 gigabyte of memory yeah. but if you use 220 it's gonna run slow you know my burnout is when i start putting multiple things in front of me and they're just open but i'm not doing anything okay yeah like, like activities like, or yeah like I'll, I'll put like let's say i have some uh, it going on in terms of azure and cloud architecture in the background and i'll have like a monitor with an edit that's supposed to happen mm -hmm. and like three hours later i'm in the same place and i'm like where did the time go Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you're burning out. Mm -hmm. You're not. You're you're starting to lose concepts. Yeah, you're starting to lose. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, starting. Yeah, I'm starting to get start. out of touch with the reality yeah. of like what's going on. And then like another thing I notice is if I'm just sitting quietly for no reason. But see, I love sitting quiet. No, no, I get what you're saying, but you're sitting quietly intentionally. Like I just wake up and realize I'm oh, yeah. sitting. Oh, you just sitting quiet. You ain't got yeah. You ain't even try. You just yeah, I didn't it. realize yeah. I was just just quiet for yeah. a brick. Not like a little bit, like a, a brick. Yeah, like a and time. I'm just like I'm just off somewhere. Like yeah. I forgot what movie it was, but it's like, hey, where are you going? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's when it's like, now nah, your burnout's coming. You got um, you got to reassess and realign. Wild dreams too. Mm -hmm. Like sleep, sleep issues, because um, it, it's a point where like you're exhausted and you sleep good because you're exhausted. Mm -hmm. and then there's also a point where you don't sleep good because you're too exhausted. Mm -hmm. It's not getting enough rest at night, so you're taking the everything of the, the world or what you're doing with to bed with mm -hmm. you, and it's wrestling with you. Yeah, I think I came to realize that on the dream side, when I'm burning out, I don't have dreams. It's just dark. Mm. That's so it's so usually I thought I wasn't remembering my dreams and then I just came to realize no there was just nothing there when you were dreaming most of the time that's mm -hmm. why you don't remember anything yeah because as of late now I'm like oh no I dreamed about this and I dreamed about that and then certain nights it'll just be nothing as a oh I've been overworking I've been doing too much it's catching up to me yeah. the walls the walls are getting in closer okay yeah. cool cool I got yeah. uh, might have to let some things go that's why I stopped housekeeping that series I was like it's on the back burner I was like I can only handle two things Mental Health Monday and my shoes um, I'm only going to do sit downs with people that want to do sit downs with us that enjoy us I'm not doing this chasing thing with anybody I don't yeah. give a fuck who it is mm -hmm. um, and like you know the platform is still built on professionals on the wellness side professionals on the therapy and mental health side and people that have gone through it and now making space for people that are now becoming familiar with mental health and I think those are some of the most important conversations because you should be making space for people that don't believe in mental health and those that are now new to mental health and yeah. what that experience is about 
because that's real, where the real work is. Mm -hmm. Like who you are in this space, we're not worried about you. You're good. Let us know if you need support. Right. But the newer people do need to have someone that just has a conversation and says, actually, this is what that looks like. This is what that feels like. This is what you should look into. Or, hey, you're doing a good job. Yeah. And that be the support. Yeah. So. I agree. I agree. <laughs> it's important to note um you know, folks that mm -hmm. knowing your limits. Yeah, I've I've got to the point now. I, I know my limits because um, I've burnt them out so many times mm -hmm. to a crisp. Which take practice. It takes practice. It yeah. takes practice. You got to yeah. know yourself, and that's the part of the therapy that you know they get. You get the tools, mm -hmm. but you got to practice on your own. You do. You know what I'm saying? You got. Yeah. So when people ask me, oh, how do you know when you need to do this? How do you know we're doing that? I'm very much in tune with my body. Mm -hmm. My body don't like a lot of stuff. My uh, body. <laughs> my wife, me and my wife had this running joke that she called me a delicate rose. <laughs> I don't like, it don't, it don't react to a lot of different things. It, mm -hmm. it likes consistency. It likes the things that have helps it. It don't like things that hinder. Yeah. Um, and so, and that's, I mean, I'll be 36 next month. And so, um, you know God willing Amen Yes yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah God willing Um, But it's You know I've learned over time What that looks like My body feels like It doesn't like This dairy product no more. You know It doesn't like this food no more It, it doesn't like a, a certain amount of sleep Yeah It likes Peace and quiet It likes Structure It likes this different things But You have to go through some Things in life To know that Mm -hmm. And that's not saying it's not to be negative, but you just gotta learn yourself. It's just facts. You just gotta learn yourself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You gotta learn yourself. So. Alright, so this has been another episode of Mental Health Monday. I appreciate everybody for pulling up. Thank you, yes, Trey, for sir. pulling up, man. How far you be coming out? How far are your drives in Virginia? Hour and a half, brother. We gotta bring you up to DC more often. I say that all the time. I say it all the time. Hour and if we half, if we could get you on a once a month schedule, you know, just have you in here chatting, you you gonna start being in rooms with more people on this end. I'm just letting you know is yeah. one day it's gonna be three of us, one day it's gonna be five of us at a table playing cards, chatting. Is, I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready for those chapters. Hey, man, I'm ready. I'm just yeah. saying, hey, time. And mm -hmm. we get, but, but, you know, it's always a good time when you're up here, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I appreciate the platform. I always appreciate you no, same, and same. the dialogue and, you know, what we're what we doing, man. Hopefully it's helping people and moving people as well. No, it's helping them, man. Thank you, you for know? being my friend. That's that's what's most important to yeah, me on this end. Yeah. Just, you know, I don't know how much of this I'd be able to do without you, bro. Just, Damn, just, <laughs> we've, had, we've had some calls. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, yeah. Some you've seen me handle some emergencies, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I remember, Pepper's yeah. mom remembers. <laughs> <laughs> Pepper's mom remembers.